Hello everyone, back to tuning into today's uh, fur video. So we're going to have a look at the weather next 10 to 14 days for today's fur uh, video. Uh, day 10 will take around the uh, 16th of March. We'll be able to extend out beyond that. We extended GFS and ECM ensembles. We're going to try to cut weeks. Yes, I did say the ECM ensembles. More about that in a moment. I'm going to have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. So it's going to be a very interesting uh, watch. We've had a, a GFS run turn up today, but it's going to town in the extended range with the Greenland high so uh, more about that a little bit later on but could we have a final blast of winter before we're done well we'll have a look at the data in a moment just say if you're enjoying the videos on our channel at the moment please can you uh, give us a like make sure you're subscribed as well to your friends and anybody else to subscribe thank you so much everybody uh, for doing that and drop a comment of course when you've watched your video and let us know uh, what you think um, the first thing we released today was the ECM 42 day forecast six week look ahead uh, and also uh, we released a weekend forecast as well have a look at both of those videos if you have not yet done so now about the ECM WF uh, uh, ensembles so uh, we I have got the clusters for you today not from the Icelandic Met Office but they're still not available at the Icelandic Met Office I don't think they're probably gone now at the Icelandic methods, but I will be able to bring you ECM ensembles. More about that later in the video. But we're going to start off with Central England temperature. So uh, this is how a CT is currently standing after the first five days of March, provisional to the fifth. We're sitting at 4.1. That's an anomaly of around half a degree uh, below average. That's probably going to tick down further, especially if we start generating some uh, colder nights under this ridge of high pressure. So a relatively cold start to March so far. GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Next couple of weeks looking like this. The red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average. So we're starting off below average at the moment. It is quite a chilly air mass that we're under with this area of high pressure. We'll see the upper air temperatures lifting up as we go through uh, into the middle part of next week and then falling away again into the second half next week. Now into the middle part of March, in the second half of the month, a lot of scatter then. Look at all the scatter that we've got between the ensemble members up here that are generally uh, mild or very mild and these ones down here which does include the latest operational GFS run which are much much colder including this thick green line uh, just there so there's a lot of scattered generally the GFS ensembles are trending milder I think into the second half of uh, March but with a very significant minority including the uh, operational and the control which is the thick blue line both of them are uh, going into to, you know, really considerably cold of an average uh, weather into the second half of March. So it's all to be revealed where things are going uh, after mid-month. Precipitation-wise, there's going to be a lot of dry weather with this ridge of high pressure over the next few days. Then it gets much more unsettled through the middle part of the month with regular bouts of rain, maybe a little bit drier. Uh, later on. That's the ensemble graph for London, by the way. Temperature anomaly from the 2nd through to the 14th of March. You're going to be slightly cold on average. That's just the UK, but through most parts of uh, Western Europe. Precipitation anomalies with a north south split. Northern areas are going to be wetter than average. Southern areas are going to be a little bit drier than average. Latest wind flow map from EarthNollSchool.net shows that high pressure is still in control, but we have got plenty of low pressure out in the Atlantic, and these areas of low pressure are on their way. As we go through into next week, it will turn much more unsettled. This is how the latest UK Met Office run is looking for Tuesday, breaking down the ridge on Tuesday, turning more unsettled. Wednesday, wet and windy. Thursday, uh, midnight Wednesday to Thursday, I suppose. Uh, severe gales could be sweeping across particularly southern and western parts of the country. It looks wild as we go up towards uh, 144 hours, as far as we get to, of the UK Met, which is the 12th of March. We're in a cold and showery uh, west to uh, eventually will become northwesterly flow. That's UK Met down as far as we get to with that one. This is how a GFS 6Z is looking again. We're breaking down that ridge on Tuesday, turning very unsettled from Tuesday into Wednesday with heavy rain, strong winds swinging across the country. But this is the area of low pressure. It could give some severe gales actually on, uh, on Wednesday night. 
This might become a named storm. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but as we go through uh, Wednesday to Thursday, look at this. Severe gales across England and Wales. This will particularly batter Wales and southwest England, but could give a real battering to other parts of uh, England as well. Gusts of wind could go up to 60, 70, maybe even 80 miles an hour uh, with that. Wow. That gets out of the way, and we're left into uh, a cold and showery run of west to northwesterly winds as we go through Friday and into to weekend. Uh, yeah, we'll be getting cold as well, so those showers will turn increasingly wintry in the north through Friday and into the weekend. But it gets a bit milder as we run up towards day 10. Heights begin to rise around Spain and we start to pull up uh, a much milder southwest. So that's a nice little burst of spring uh, then as we get to day 10, which is the 16th of March, but not for long. Look where the high pressure goes then. We've got retrogression here, or retrogression of the high pressure going northwards up to Greenland. Low pressure plunging down through Scandinavia and we've got a northerly wind blasting in here just beyond uh, mid-month. It turns bitterly cold. Uh, and there is a risk of you know, snow with this uh, as well. A proper Greenland blocking feature around Greenland and Iceland. Low pressure is a way to our reason. Winds properly digging in from a, from a cold northerly direction. There's the up rare temperatures shown that we are in, you know, for the second half of March, we are in, 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 in a really cold uh, spell of weather and sort of locked into that as well. This is a proper blocking feature. There's no quick way out of that once we get into that kind of blocking. So it's not until the very, very end of a GFS run, which gets us to the 22nd of March, that this low pressure starts to rattling, probably brings snow north and east across the country over there, but would eventually pull in some minor air. Uh, from the southwest, but definitely a really, really cold plunge with that GFX 6 f What a run that was today. Uh, right, this is a bit from the weather outlook. Based on that GFX 6 f run, these are the wind gusts that we're looking at. So, so the first push of winds comes through Tuesday night into Wednesday. We could get, get gusts of wind up around 50 or 60 mile an hour. Uh, then it goes a little bit calmer for a while during Wednesday itself, but then Wednesday night into uh, Thursday, that's when the winds uh, really do get up. And, uh, you know, even well inland, we're looking at 50, 60 mile an hour gusts out in the west at the Irish Sea, like up to 70, possibly 80 mile an hour gusts around these northern and western Irish Sea coast of Wales in particular and northwestern England. So a real battering for North Wales and the northwest England as we go from Wednesday night into Thursday. Wow. And um, that pushes through during Thursday itself, taking like 50, 60 mile an hour gusts right way through the Midlands into eastern England. All sort of gets out of the way into North Sea during Thursday. Friday will be windy. Gusts of wind then up to around 30 to 40 miles an hour. So still significantly windy. Maybe 50 mile an hour gusts around North Wales uh, again, but but nowhere near as bad as it is on Wednesday night and into Thursday. It's going to be a proper wild time for your middle part of the week. We have had too many windstorms, have we, uh, during this, uh, during this, um, let's have a look at the precipitation type as well. We haven't had too many windstorms during this winter, really. It's not really been that stormy of a winter, so we haven't had too much of this, but it does look as though we have got a proper old wild time of it uh, as we get through. Uh, what am I trying to do? Precipitation type. There you go. As we get through to the middle part of the week. Right, let's just have a look at the precipitation type forecast based on that GFS 6 set, and then we'll move on. So, uh, of course, initially it's going to be mainly dry. Then we'll start bringing showery rain in from west. Then around the middle of the week it turns very wet and windy, lots of heavy rain. And then cold rain will dig in to the north and west in the last stage of the week, turning showers readily wintry uh, in the north. Mostly suggested to be rain down in the south as we go through into uh, the weekend. We get through into uh, the following week. It's turning milder, of course, around the middle part of the month. And then we get that green and high going, which will turn wind if it comes off, turn wind into the north, and then showers, of course, turning readily to snow, even in southern areas, through into the end, or in, for instance, second half of the month. Uh, GEM break down the ridge as we go through uh, into the middle part of the week, turning wet, windy, maybe quite stormy around the middle of the week. And we keep that uh, onslaught going from the Atlantic as we go up towards day 10 as well, with a GEM 
and this looks like it's going to have a go at sending a ridge up to Greenland as well, doesn't it? This is day 10, Tuesday 16th of March. The ridge is sort of to the west of Ireland, uh, somewhere between Biscay and Ireland. But it looks like it's going to start pushing northwards to me, that. So it could run on another 24 hours. I think we'll probably find this low just here, going in that direction, and we'd send the ridge up there and potentially start pulling the wind from the north. So I think the GM is also trying to get northerlies going just after day 10. Uh, and then we've got the Icon uh, model as well. Breaking down ridge in the middle of the week. Very wet and windy, quite stormy. Wednesday into Thursday. And then we go on into the weekend of the 13th, 14th of March. Still looking very unsettled with this next low. Push through quite cold air associated with that as well. So that could bring some snow to more northern parts of the country. ECM, again, the ridge is breaking down through the middle part of the week to an increasingly wet, windy, stormy there, potentially on Wednesday night into Thursday, particularly for Ireland, England, and Wales. Now we're into that cold, showery, west northwesterly flow through to the weekend. There are troughs and disturbances within that quite cold northwesterly so again there's a prospect of something wintry coming through heading up towards day 10 that's how we're looking in quite a cold and showery northwest wind would be ECM send the high pressure north and send it up to Greenland less convinced about that one uh could go in either way really uh the, the region might go north or we might just bring some mud air in around the top up to day 10 it is quite chilly though with winds remaining from a northwesterly direction this is the precipitation type forecast from Tometio.com based on that ECM run. So again, lots of wet and windy weather around the middle part of the week. Very pulling those cold northwesterly winds. Shout out readily to, show, to snow in the north and the west. Into the end of the week, there's some rain. Zim across the south might be a little bit of winteriness on the leading edge or on the northern edge uh, with that. Into next weekend, again, another bout of rain pushes through. Snow possible for parts of uh, Wales, northern England and up into uh, Scotland with that too. Uh, another bit of a snow event here around the 14th. That's next Sunday. Uh, more focus on the south. So through Wales and southern parts of England. Wow. ECM is bringing in some snow. Rain down towards the south coast. That could be snow through Wales and the Midlands perhaps next weekend. Um, then up to day 10, uh, we remain quite cold and showery with winds in from a northwest direction. Now, I can show you the options on the table within the ECM ensembles for day 10. Not from the Isaiah Met Office. I think they've gone. I don't think they're going to come back. They may do, but but it doesn't look like they're going to come back. These these, these options, these clusters, are from uh, ECMWF.INT itself. I have downloaded these from ECMWF.INT. They're basically showing the same thing that we saw with the uh, options from the Isaiah Met Office, except... Instead of like just focusing on the North Atlantic and, and Northwestern Europe, so Iceland, Scandinavia and the UK and Ireland, instead of focusing on that area, it's a much wider view of, uh, 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 of the Northern Hemisphere on our side of North, Northern Hemisphere. So just so you know where everyone is, that's North America just, just there. Whoops, let's get rid of that. So this is going to be uh, North America just here. This is Greenland just there. That's Scandinavia just there. Ireland and the UK is just there. This is like mainland. Land, uh, Europe. Let me know what you think, everybody, if you want to see these uh, clusters. Uh, right, so uh, this is for day 10. We have 19, this is the 16th of March, 19 members of the ECM ensembles with a trough of low pressure day 10 to our south and east. And uh, high pressure is uh, away to our northwest and west, just here. So cold and blocked uh, with that one. Uh, and potentially a little bit winchy as well. Uh, then this middle option just here is, again, 19 members of the ECM ensembles with the ridge of high pressure just a little bit further southward. So we're bringing in more of a west-northwesterly around the top of the high. Maybe not quite as cold with that, but the low pressure is light to the south and to the east. That's a slightly milder option and pretty dry. And then uh, down here, we have 13 members of the ECL So one thing I don't know if this is, is which options are including the control and the operation. I'm not sure about that. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, 13 members of the ECM ensembles. Again, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge kind of trying to get towards some northern blocking in the Norwegian Sea. Lower pressure just here. Again, I think this is probably bringing in a little bit more of a westerly, northwesterly um, type flow. So the top option, this one up here, is definitely like the coldest uh, and uh, the most wintry potential. 
And then in two weeks' time, uh, these are the options that we've got. This will get us to the 21st of March. 17 members of the ECM ensembles have low pressure away to our northwest. I mean, breeze are 500 mil of our heights, but they, they extrapolate back to low pressure and high pressure. So low pressure to our west-northwest, high pressure to our east-northeast. Uh, that's going to be a more settled option, but is uh, potentially bringing in something quite cold from the east. It's a bit of a little bit of a battleground scenario uh, as well. Uh, then this option just here, 13 members of the ECM ensembles are going in the same direction as the GFS operational run, sending the high pressure up to Greenland and producing, producing masses and masses of northern blocking with low pressure in the jet stream digging southwards and uh, of course they'd be pulling in like cold or really very cold air for, for March anyway in from the north and from the northeast that's a very uh, that's very much in line with, with like the GFS uh, 6 z operational uh, we have 12 members of the ECL ensemble remember this is all the 21st of March showing low pressure coming in off the Atlantic but the jet stream is digging southwards a little bit um, so unsettled but sending jet stream southwards could be a little bit on, on the cool side and then, uh, finally, we have nine members of the ECM ensembles just here with high pressure pulled out into the middle of the Atlantic, going up towards the south of Greenland, a trough of low pressure extending down through northern and western Europe. Dip in the jet stream means it would be quite cold with that scenario. But definitely the coldest scenario out of before is this one uh, just here, uh, this, uh, this one uh, just there, which does have this very, very extensive blocking going up to Greenland and pushing back into the Arctic as well. That is in line with the GFS-6 air building up the Greenland high. Right, uh, finally, it's so it, all, it all remains to be revealed, but it looks like it's staying pretty chilly, doesn't it? For, for the time being, really, of any milder weather, quite short lived. Right, finally, CFSB 2 is a 500 bill of our heights break it down into week pairs. The first week pair takes from the 6th to the 12th of March. The coming week looks a bit of a mess. Low pressure out to uh, the northwest and to our south. It's going to be turning more unsettled in the next few days. Uh, week 2 looks flat as a pancake. This is the 13th to the 19th of March with high pressure to our south, low pressure to the north. In comes uh, a westerly flow, so unsettled but mild with that. Week 3 is going to be the 20th to 26th of March. High pressure again to our south and southwest, low pressure to our northwest. Winds in from a flat westerly direction. That should be pretty mild. And for the south, anyway, probably quite dry. And then week 4, all change, all change, all change. This is 27th of March, 2nd of April, running up towards Easter. Low pressure at north, high pressure pulled out into the middle of the Atlantic. Jet stream going on northwest, south, being alignment, looking cooler and more unsettled in the fourth week as we come to the end of March. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please don't smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We're grinding to 11k subscribers, and it really is a grind. Subs are so slow at the moment. But so please give us a sub if you haven't yet done so to your friends, family, and be able to subscribe. Thank you so much uh, for doing that. Uh, you'll be able to see future weather content as well. If you uh, subscribe, click the bell. Click the bell, and uh, YouTube will let you know when we release uh, our content, either videos or live streams or uh, community posts and whatnot, um, and drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Right, that's it then. That's it for today's vids. Now, uh, if you're around the channel at 5pm, please check in at 5 if you're a channel member. Uh, we're going to do a channel member's live stream. Always doing one of those on the first Saturday of, uh, of the month. So, uh, yeah, channel member's live stream coming up. I'll see you at 5 if you're a channel member. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have the uh, first summer update. Wow, we're at summer updates already. First summer update coming up for you tomorrow. Whereas Dazworth is turning around, I'll be live streaming from 6 o'clock. We're going to show some long range uh, data in the live stream tomorrow from 6. So, I shall see you then. Uh, but for this one, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.